Hello students, in this video we'll use the piano axioms to show there's a unique way to define the addition operation on two natural numbers. So our theorem is going to state the following. For any pair n and m and n, there is a unique way to define an operation A of n and m, which we're going to write in two ways. We're going to write it as A of n and m, and also as m, n plus m. So these two expressions are identical to each other. Such that what? Such that, well, we're going to say this is in, in such a way that what will happen. Such that, such that the first property of this addition operation is that A of n and 1 is going to be the successor of n. So in other words, another way to write this, this is equivalent in our, with our other notation saying that n plus 1 is equal to s of n. That coincides with what we think a successor should be. Using our intuition from what addition is, we say that s of n, the successor of n, should be n plus 1 more for the natural numbers. Two is that a of n and the successor of m will be the successor of a and n m. Now, what will this be in our other notation? This will say if I this will say that if I look at n plus s of m, that should be equal to what? That should be equal to the successor of n plus. So that gives us a functional relationship between the successor and this addition operation. Okay? The first thing we're going to do is we're going to show that this is a that if those two properties are true, this is a, there's a unique way to define addition. So let's do that. So let's first prove uniqueness of this operation. So let's suppose that A and B are two additions. A and B satisfy 1 and 2. Okay? And I'm going to let, so I'm going to fix n. And I'm going to consider the set m, which is the set of all m in n, such that what? Such that a of n m is b of n and m. And I'm going to show this set m is all of n by induction. So how do we do that? Well, first note that a of n1 by property 1 is the, is the successor of n, but b of n1, since it satisfies 1 and 2, is also the successor of n. So this statement over here is equivalent to saying that 1 is in m. So 1 is in the set m. Good. Now if m is in m, that says that a of n and m is equal to b of n and m. So now, by our, one of our piano axioms, I can take the successor of this relationship. So this will tell me that s of a of n and m is equal to s of b of n and m. And now by property 2, I can put the successor on the m. So this tells me that the successor, so that a, this is equivalent to saying that a of n and s of m is equal to b of n and s of m. And that tells me that if m is an n, then so is s m. And so this set m is all of n by induction. So m is equal to n by induction. And this imply that this addition operation A is equivalent to this addition operation B. So there's only one way to define addition so that 1 and 2 are true. Now let's proceed to the construction of our addition operation. This is going to be very important to sort of focus on the properties of this construction, because the properties of this construction are actually going to force other properties onto this addition operation. So here's the construction element of this. Okay. So what we're going to do is we'd like to define this addition in such a way that we can do this for all n and m. So let's do this in two phases. So if n is equal to 1, let's figure out what will happen over here. So I'm going to define my addition of n and m just to be the successor of m. This is, I'm, this is my de definition of addition when n is equal to 1. Okay? So let's see, does this satisfy both my properties? Let's check property number 1. What would property number 1 be? Let's look at a of n and 1. Okay? Well, what would a of n and 1 be? Well, a of m 
n and 1 is going to be the successor of 1. But n is equal to 1, so this is the successor of n. And we have our first property is satisfied. What's our second property? If I look at a of n and s of m, this will be the successor of what? By definition, this is going to be the successor of the successor of m. But what is the successor of m? The successor of m is a of n and m. So this is the successor of a of n and m. And therefore, our second property is satisfied if this is our definition when n is equal to 1. So we've shown that it's possible to define this operation when n is equal to 1. So if I consider the set of all n for which I can define this operation, I'm very close to showing this is true by induction. So next, we're going to assume that addition has been defined next. Assume A and M has been defined with properties 1 and 2 being true. Now, of course, one other thing to consider over here is that when we're doing this, we're doing this is that's showing us that n plus 1 is equal to s of n. So thinking about how this construction is helping us will help us show that addition is actually commutative in the next video. Okay? So now, what we we'll like to do, I'd like to define a of s n of m. Now we define a of s n and m. Well, what will this be? This is going to be, by definition, it's going to be the successor of a and n and m. That's going to be our definition of addition. Now, we know that this is well-defined over here. So this is a well-defined object over here. So this well-defined object on the right-hand side tells us how to define the object for the next, for the successor of n. So now let's verify that this satisfies both of our conditions. So let's look first at property number one. So what would property number one look like? So for property number one, let's look at a of s n comma what comma 1 okay according to this definition this is going to be what this is going to be s of a of n and 1 but now we know that a of n and 1 is defined it's s of what it's s of n so this is s of s of n and now what is s of n s of n is going to be what? So I need to show that a of that a of n one is the successor of this thing. So the so a of s n one is the successor of the successor of one. So one is satisfied. So mark in first condition is satisfied. Now let's look at condition number two. Our second condition. So I want to look at a of s n with what now? With s m. With s m. So what is this? By definition, what's our definition over here? It says if I have a of s n m, it's going to be a of n s m. So this is going to be the successor of a of what? Of a of n with s m. That's our definition. Now, since a of n m has been defined, I know that a of n s m is the successor of a of n s m. So this is the successor of the successor of a of n m. Good. And so now what do we know by definition over here? By definition, what this is going to be is this is going to be the successor. I can put the successor onto the m over here by my properties of addition. So this is the successor of a of n. So I need my, my a of s of n, actually. It's my a of s of n. So we have, let's look at this carefully over here. So now what do we know about this addition over here? So this addition can be defined as a of s of n, so a of s of n comma m. And now what we have over here is we have that this relationship is true, is a of this relationship is true for s of n. So now we have that s of n is, I can define addition at s of n for any value m, assuming that a of n m is defined. So now by induction, I have the addition is well defined for all pairs of natural numbers m and n. Thank you very much.